guys, Misty here. Welcome back for another episode of Color Your World with Diamond Painting along with As me. You can see, my setup is different because we got to move into our new apartment. Yay! So we are super excited and it did not go as smooth as we wanted it to, but we are in. Um, but um, it just it it did not go as well as we had hoped um there was a program that was talking about helping us um with rent for the first month to get us back on our feet uh and everything and that didn't work out they were supposed to they were supposed to come and do an inspection of the apartment and then they were supposed to uh, cut a check for the amount that was needed. And it just, I mean, we told them months in advance and it just did not get done. And it is really unfortunate because we were counting on those funds to help us out. Especially since my husband has not actually gotten any unemployment. We're doing 211 and it's the letter H. So, so it didn't go exactly as we planned. Um, we had called the company and tried to figure out if they came and did the inspection like they were supposed to. Found out they did not do the inspection like they were supposed to. Then they told us, oh, well, you, um, it could take a few days to get the payment. So we said, forget it. We'll just, we'll just um, come out of pocket for it. And it was rather unfortunate, like I said, because we were anticipating those funds. Um, and we're kind of trying to live on a budget here. Okay, let me change out this wax because I don't know why it's not cooperating, but it's not. Could have got something in the tip of it, I don't know with the move and everything. So, um, I think you need to turn down the trace phone a little bit. I think the volume is a little high. All right, I don't know where my tweezers are, so. And I'm using German Design Wax, so, cause we are on a mission to test these waxes out to see if they work out well so now I've had to poke this thing twice now and I'm only on the fourth color which is kind of scary so with um, diamond art clubs I don't think it was as as much but, um, hmm. I don't remember what I did with my other tray for the garbage trash drills. Okay, uh, so I'll actually put them over on my, I have a little, a little container thing on the side of my table that I'll just put them in for now. They are empty and then when I'm done I'll put them with the other drills. So, so we get to the apartment at 10 o'clock for our appointment. Find out that they did not come do the inspection over the weekend like they were supposed to. And then we ended up, they said, oh, well, you could go into the apartment and do the inspection and send us videos of it and blah, 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 blah. So we were going to do that, but then we were like, what's the point if it's, they're going to make us wait more days? I mean, I don't know um like how much longer i could 
insanely be homeless. Honestly, like it was a lot. It took a toll, a toll on us because like I was saying, like our lives seemed like they were on pause because everything was, well, we have to wait until we get our own place or we have to, you know, do this when we get our own place and do that when we get our own place. And so it was kind of like we're excited to move into this new place and then you're going to tell us we have to wait more days after we've already waited so many days and we were already signing the lease and everything so the apartment manager was a little bit like frustrated because because she did not want to have to reprint all the paperwork out and um <clears throat> She wanted to know why why she had to do their job because they actually wanted her to go in and like do a virtual session with her and they were like and she was like no I'm not doing your job like you should have came and and did it like why am I having to do your job so we didn't get the keys until 3 p.m. because in that process time they went to lunch and we actually had a another company who was willing to let us use their work van in order to um, move some of our stuff and in the in the meantime the um, case manager for us at the homeless shelter is like how come you're not asking for moving um, people to help you move and I'm like what are you talking about she says that I need to contact my case manager again and tell her that we need help moving our stuff because they have moving companies that they work with and they should pay for it and I'm like what are you serious like but we didn't know um that he was going to actually help us move the whole the whole thing we thought he was only going to help us move the things that my husband couldn't move by himself so when when we told him about it he had said originally that um we didn't get our keys until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, so we contacted the lady and she came over and she helped us get our beds for the night at least because the guy couldn't help us move until the next day at 10 a.m. And then come to find out, he's like, well, if I would have known that you guys had so much stuff, I would have... Um, I would have brought another guy. Well, I didn't think our stuff was a lot, but I also didn't know he was going to be moving all of our stuff. So we felt bad, but my husband helped them load, load up most of the stuff and, um, they were able to get it all done. But, um, my idea was to put it all in the living room and... I really honestly should have told them to put them in different rooms, but I was trying to make life more simple for them, where everything was going to eventually go in their own rooms um, and go that route. My husband's got other things that he's obligated to do, so um, we're, we're trying to, to get it all sorted out and figured out. and. I can only do so much because my my back and neck start to hurt really bad and I just want to get it all done because why I want to hang up my diamond paintings so that I can show them <laughs> I mean they've been locked in a in a in a dungeon for like seven months so they they want to be freed and put up on the wall where they were intended to be. So there's that. 
Um, so we got everything moved in by 12, I want to say 12 p.m. on Tuesday. And slowly but surely we're trying to take back over our living room because right now it is a disaster area. We got our couch set up and we got my table semi set up because, you know, obviously I have to record. So I told my husband we have to... I have to get this stuff in order so I can do my recording and um, and then eventually edit and stuff and have my space to be able to do this. So that is what we're doing now. And so we got that all set up and um, I just, I can't believe that I'm back on my table. It's so nice to have room and to be able to move my table around as I need to or um, just just to be able to to have you know the the spatial space. So it's really nice. Then, um, let's see what else. Um, so it looks like my husband was denied for unemployment because they're saying he didn't make enough. So, uh, because he filed for the regular unemployment. And so we're waiting to see if they're going to fix it with the new quarter. Because they only used 2019's quarter and he was self-employed during that time. So, we are hoping that they will include quarter of, uh, the first quarter of 2020. Because if not, then he's just going to get the pandemic unemployment. And we actually got a hold of somebody today. And it didn't, like to me, it didn't sound like they knew what they were talking about. Because they weren't really listening to what I was saying. Um, but they kept just saying... Oh, you qualify for the pandemic unemployment. You qualify. But I thought that if they were saying, like, if you did not qualify for regular unemployment, that they automatically put you over into the, into the pandemic part. So that's another thing that I'm confused about because I thought it was an automatic thing that they were doing. Um, it said that he couldn't call until on or after the 10th, which he did. And then they said that the payment was denied because he didn't make enough. So I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> uh, why isn't he getting anything? You told us to, uh, uh, you know, to put it through and then, and then you deny it. So I don't understand that. Um, and nobody's calling, of course, to help and we don't know how to contact anybody other than the side that we were contacting and they say they don't do the w2 side so it's very frustrating um what else do we got going on here um oh yeah i got my I got my Diamond Art Clubs in the mail and I recorded the video for the unboxing so I uh, look forward to that coming up and um, then I'll be trying to figure out what I'm going to do next after this Twisted Blossom, Blossom is done. These symbols are super hard to see. Oh my god. I feel like I have to complain about this every video. And I don't mean to. And I end up cutting most of it out. Because I want to seem like a jerk. But really honestly like. They made these symbols way too small. Is there an N? I just want to make sure I'm not putting. Okay. I don't want to put on the wrong symbol. They're so tiny. What else happened? 
over the weekend. I went to my sister's house over the weekend and found out she, I, I actually confirmed she has not hung up her diamond painting. And then I asked her um, about said diamond painting and she told me it got folded up and then said some of the diamonds fell off of it so then i told her to let me know which ones let me see it i didn't get to see it but i told her i needed to know because i have the diamonds in my in my stash still saved for when they if when if they fall off ever So, they have it just sitting downstairs somewhere, not hung up. This, and this is exactly why I no longer give them as gifts. Because I spent like a month working on that thing. Maybe less, but maybe more, I don't know. Between the one that I did for her and the one I did for my nephew. Um, I think it was like six weeks. So. I try to be nice and do nice things. And they don't like it. My, my nephew got mad at me like I said. And said he was selling his on Facebook. I don't know if he was successful at it. I know he tried to to sell it for like $40. I seen it, I seen it listed and left. That's how I found out about it. Because I, I go on the marketplace on Facebook. And I look for picture frames if I'm going to try to picture frame. I'm going to try to frame... Diamond painting. Because you can get some really good deals on that. As opposed to buying them at stores. And most of these companies, um, most of the companies like on AliExpress and stuff, they will sell you diamond paintings that are like oddball sizes so you'll find it impossible to to find a frame that's not custom and custom framing is really expensive uh, I have only custom framed one thing my entire life and that was only because my husband wanted it to be custom framed I had bought this we, my husband and I, purchased our first art piece from a tattoo artist that I that I know in Sacramento. And we purchased this really cool owl that he painted. And at the time, my husband was friends with somebody who owned a custom frame shop. So, it was expensive as heck, and that was with a friend and family discount, so I can only imagine how expensive it would be. And then, he came and he delivered it to our apartment, and then he came and he hung it up on our wall, and then my kids... We're doing something when my oldest was watching them. God knows what they did, but they did something. And they ended up flipping the them painting off the wall or were hung on it or something. And come to find out, it snapped the wire on the back of it. It then crashed down onto a like um, cubicle 
a cube, not a cubicle, but a cube, like, bookcase kind of a thing. And then it ended up getting a huge gash in the black frame because it was actually um, double framed. It was framed in white and then framed in black. And so the black broke when it fell. It like it it caused a gash in it. And then when we moved to Colorado, the black part ended up coming off. I mean, they're they're held on by the same little prongy things that hold on another, you know, a regular picture frame. So it can be easily put back on without any issues, but, um, it's currently in two pieces, so, um, we have not hung it back up yet, we left it sitting on the floor for a few months, so, um, because it was unfortunately... Um, we like, we didn't want to take the chance of hanging it back up and then it getting like knocked over again. So, and then my husband also from, from the custom framer, he is actually an artist. Slash photographer, I think. And, you know, if you're going to be in a hobby that's expensive, you better know how to frame, I, I would say. Like, if you're going to be an artist, you better know how to frame. Because then you never have to pay for the framing to be done on it. You can do it, you can do it all yourself. <laughs> And then, um, he and I actually, um, don't get along anymore because he actually tried to talk my husband into marrying me <laughs> and said some stupid things like just because she's pregnant doesn't mean you have to get married but that's not the reason we were getting married to begin with uh little does he know <laughs> but we asked him to officiate our wedding because i thought oh he's such a good guy and blah 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 and then he showed his true colors like we asked him to stop sending um clips and stuff talking about not getting married and he wouldn't he refused so it got to the point where I'm like dude you are obsessed with trying to get my husband not to marry me and I don't know what the problem is but you are you have become a toxic person and I don't want anything to do with you I even tried to, I even tried to not have my husband cut him off, but he still relentlessly sent him things. And just would not comply with what we were asking. And my uncle ended up <clears throat> officiating our wedding. My... I had asked my grandfather, but he was like, um, I'm a little too, like, shy to do that, so I don't want to do that. But he did walk me down the aisle, so that was nice. And cause my, fa my grandfather was a huge father figure in my life. My dad was pretty much absent. I talked to him on the, f on the phone for Christmas and birthdays, and that's a maybe certain other holidays but that was about it 
and he sends me birthday cards and calls me every now and then even still but uh yeah we're just, we're not very close um I didn't even think he was going to show up to the wedding because I think he had said that he couldn't or something and then he ended up changing his mind. So by that time I had already asked my grandfather who was like the number one father figure in my life so I was not about to back out now. So I think he was a little upset about that but you know I'm like you know yeah. You weren't around enough for you to have that special bond and my grandfather was so I think my grandfather felt a little bad too but he respected what I wanted and when I told him I wanted him to be the one to walk me down the aisle he's like okay. My husband and I, um, we had known each other for a while, so it wasn't like we got married really on the fly, although to everyone else it seemed that way, because to everyone else, they were thinking like we just started dating and we had been together for less than a year and you know like what are you thinking you know are you guys crazy and like I said that guy he kept saying like you have to experience everything twice like you have to date at least for two years before you can decide to marry somebody and well um my husband and I had talked about it we both talked about what we wanted out of life and what we had expected of each other and I told him like um, if you want to have kids we're gonna have to like move fast because I have a kid you know I have a teenage kid so for me I could I could be just fine with no more kids but you know you have all these plans that you want in your life as well so we're not spring chickens and so you've got to decide you know what what we're gonna do and um, my body's deciding what we're gonna do faster than than what maybe you you want it to be because I think initially his craziness says something like seven years. Was it seven years? Because my favorite number. Because his favorite number is seven. It's not because, oh, uh, we need to wait seven years just because we need to make sure we're compatible. Oh, no, it's because it's his favorite number. I'm like, are you, uh, I can't wait seven years. I mean, we haven't even been married seven years yet. So, technically... This year, in July, will be our seven our six year anniversary. Six year anniversary. So, if he had it his convoluted way, <laughs> we would still not be married now. In all fairness, we have known each other for longer than seven years. Yes, I know we've known each other longer than seven years, but um. They don't know that. I mean, you know, like your family didn't know that you knew me that long. Like, they all thought he had lost his ever loving mind. So he had everyone, everyone in his life telling him, no, 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 you don't want to get married, you don't want to get married. And we're married. So 
I guess he did want to get married. And he keeps telling me, like he's told me all this time, like we could have been married years ago if we had really like paid attention to the, the to the things and you know whatnot. And but when we had met, we were in very different parts of our lives. So I don't know if back then our relationship would be the same as what it is now. Because we probably needed to experience the things that we experienced to get to the point where we were. Um, my son has long hair, it goes down to his waist. He's been growing it out his entire life. And people mistake him all the time for a girl. They ask, oh, how old is she? And my husband gets frustrated about it, but my son loves his hair long. We've tried to ask him, do you want to get your hair cut like Ken or like Dad or like, you know, whatever, whatever character we can compare short hair to or we'll show him pictures in magazines or, you know, whatever. And he's like, no, he likes his hair long. And I've always said that um, I will let it grow out until they ask for it to be cut. So, um, I did that with my oldest son, but his dad decided that he wanted to go against what my wishes were, and he went and had his hair cut. So, I have told my husband that if he does that, he better run, and I mean far. <laughs> So, he better have an escape plan, that's all I gotta say. So, he keeps telling me that, that my youngest son, um, if, if, as soon as they start to mistake him for a girl, he is going to have both of their haircuts. And I said, over my dead body. <laughs> I don't think so. We're not going to cut my kid's hair just because people can't tell if a girl is a girl or a boy is a boy. <laughs> not going to happen. So, but my, my three-year-old is twirling his hair. He has discovered that he can twirl it and... Get it all nice and knotted up and then uh, laugh about it when I go, Oh my God, what did you do to your hair? Because he's got really fine hair. It, it knots up extremely easily. Um, and so I told my husband, we might have to cut his hair because if he's going to just get it tied in knots, then, then we might have to cut it. But I'm really, really, really reluctant on doing that because I have, you know, like I'm waiting until they ask for it to be cut. And if they can never ask for it to be cut, then it will never be cut. My husband picked a fight with the vertical blinds. And he made them mad. So now I can't twist the little thing and open and close it because... It is really angry that he he 
you know, twisted and pulled it in the wrong directions. So, unfortunately, now we have to figure out why. I told them to take them all off and then um, twist them to see. And then, because he didn't understand that you have to have them all turn and then not, and then you slide when after that then you can slide it open to open the whole to open the whole thing up so he was trying to just have them be closed and then open them up and it ended up doing whatever it did to them I don't even know because I couldn't even get the things um, to close when I went and tried to fix them so I gave up because I'm like I do not want to break them further so unfortunately so I'm just happy to be able to diamond paint again because I went a lot of days without being able to even sit down and diamond paint. Oh yeah, and um, so to update about my packages, I still have not received any word about my packages from Mayan, about my husband's free diamond painting that he won off of AliExpress or the trays that I bought because um, I bought the extra large trays I have not heard a peep out of them since they all said that they left China they're somewhere between China and the U United States and I'm like Hoping that they did not fall off a freight train or a freighter in the middle of the ocean or something because That would be really unfortunate <laughs> and One of them oops, And one of them already says it delivered to me and oh, I keep bumping the thing Whoops. One of them says that it's already sent to me but it hasn't. It just ran out of time because it had a certain amount of time it was supposed to be delivered in. So now, um, that was the free one. Well, I mean, it wasn't really free. It was a penny, but I mean, it was a penny. Penny's practically free. So, um, unfortunately, I don't know if AliExpress will do anything about it um, if it doesn't end up coming. But I know that if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So I will definitely be asking if I don't see it um, anytime soon. Um. It's just, it's unfortunate that the mail is all a mess right now. And so I'm not really upset. I'm not really upset by it. I'm just concerned that it's not going to make it to me. And that's the only thing I'm worried about. Honestly, I, I'm like not upset because it hasn't made it here yet i'm just worried it's not gonna show up like it could show up in three months and i'm not gonna mind i just want to make sure that it does it does show up I actually have ordered 
from DAC and Dreamer Designs. Um, you know, like I, when I ordered these kits and they made it to me before the China ones and they were sent. My China ones were purchased on March 30th and they were sent out like April 1st, April 3rd, and April 7th, I want to say, or something like that. They were all sent out at different times, but they all got held up somewhere, wherever they are. They all, they are all probably hanging out together. <laughs> Hopefully not in the ocean somewhere. Because I think I read somewhere that they're supposed to be air shipped. They're supposed to be shipped by airline. But I think I read somewhere that they weren't doing as many flights back and forth for cargoes and stuff. But um, so they were, they were rerouting them to... The ground or by by ocean so I'm not 100% sh sure though but um, if I had to guess I would guess that that's probably what happened because they're not they're not doing as many flights I dropped it. I don't know where it went. I'm just so happy to finally be living over in the area where my kids go to school because I don't want to be driving like four hours anymore to get him back and forth to school because it was not fun spending that much time driving back and forth every day because I would, I would, it would take me about two hours one way and two, two hours the other way and it was just... It was a lot because like the traffic was super bad trying to get to and from the area we were going so it'll be nice to be in the neighborhood where my son's school is and Aiden what the heck Aiden is supposed to start um, preschool three for three-year-olds next year so we don't know how much time I think his, his class will be like two and a half hours or something like that every day so that'll probably be my my recording times that's, you know, if school gets back to normal in the fall, because we don't even know for sure, but things are a mess out there right now. Nothing is certain. closer the tray is to where you're working, the faster you will be at placing them because you don't have as far to go with your arm. But I, d I learned my lesson about putting my tray on the diamond painting itself because um, when I first got this table, I actually 
there's a little a little lip that you can push up and push down on the table and it hurts my arm if I set my arm on it so So over the weekend we were at my sister's house and we were playing this game called what is it called? Rolling was it Rolling Stone? Rolling Stone Rock and Roll game and. It was my husband and I against my niece and my sister. My sister and my niece, they love to do trivia. So they often watch YouTube channels about mostly rock and roll because that's what mainly what they like is rock and roll. But, uh, Rock and roll trivia. A lot of the the eighties. What's the matter, baby? Help what? You want up? You want to get down? I think he wants to get out. But guess what? He's over there using his sign saying help. So like, without even really prompting, I'm looking over and he's signing help. He's mad at me as he understands. Yay! Good job, buddy. So, we're playing this game pretty much in our own way. Like, not, our, not how the game is played. But, <clears throat> so, my niece and my bro- and my, my brother-in-law? <laughs> My niece and my husband would go head to head and my sister and I would go head to head. And um they have obviously it was her their game so they have played it before. So they told us the rules that they how they like to play it and asked if we agreed and we're like, "Yeah, sure, that's fine." Um you know, cuz we don't we're we listen to a lot of music. We but, so, when you are going head-to-head, -head, you flip the card over and it tells you what to do. So, like, it could be, like, sing songs that contain the word down. So then you've got to think of all these different songs with the word down in it. Until um, somebody doesn't get one, and then that person picks the artist. These what they call artist cards, and you pick the artist, and um, you pick six cards: three for yourself and three for someone else randomly. Um, you look at the cards and you decide which ones you think your team will get, and give. The ones you think your team won't get to them. Uh, so then they will. So the way that they were playing it, it was not exact. So um, the way they were playing it, or we were playing it, was that you could either use one word to describe the artist. Or you could say a lyric. You couldn't sing it. You had to say it. Say a lyric. And then the other one was hum it. Well, we have discovered that humming sucks. <laughs> so, 
We never picked humming. So then you would um, try to get your person, your partner to pick the correct, the correct answers, uh, the correct artist rather. And then the purpose of the game is to collect a record in each, in each era, era. So, because they had different eras in the game, different bands, many different types of bands and stuff, and, um, so you're trying to collect a record from each era, and, um, that's how you win the game, but we just, we just played it to play it, so, um, <clears throat> we just played it until all of the things were gone, and then said, uh, my sister and my niece said, well, our stack is bigger, so we won. <laughs> so we're like, fine, you guys already, you know, you guys already had this game and have played it and have songs, you know, in your mind already that you've already come up with and, and such. So, um, told my husband, we need to practice. <laughs> my sister said, you need to watch more more trivia on YouTube. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I suppose I could do that in my downtime when I'm diamond painting off camera. I could just listen to song lyrics and trivia questions and, and whatnot. But, it was pretty fun, although we discovered that we don't know as many song lyrics by name or artist as we thought we did. <laughs> so, but it was, it was pretty fun, you know, because we had to come up like on the fly because you have a timer that times you out for, um, for it, so you've got to come up with something, so you, you're trying to think really, really, really fast, and that's the hard part, because once the timer's off, and you're able to think, then you come up with all kinds of different things that, that, um, that you could have said, um, I tried to get my husband to guess Rihanna, and I said, uh-oh. He just, like, stomped into my yeah, tripod. Like, and I said, uh-oh. But you didn't say uh-oh. <laughs> what, what was the clue I gave you for... I said, what? What did I say? Oh, maybe. Diamonds in the sky, no, no. I think. Oh, Is yeah, that what I, I said? You said you were no initially you did say that at one point, but initially you said married to Jay Z and I was like, oh, No, that's married. Beyonce. Oh, see? <laughs> that's a perfect illustration. Oh of Lord how Almighty. I don't know. You did not retain a thing. No, I really don't. So I think I said Diamonds in the Sky Diamond in the Sky or Diamonds in the Sky. And that just freaked me out. I'm like, who's talking? And, uh, he could not think of Rihanna. And it's kind of funny to me because I just, like, posted on TikTok, um, a, uh, me diamond painting, a part of my time lapse diamond painting with Rihanna's Shine Bright Like a Diamond. <laughs> just posted it on TikTok and and uh he already forgot like really <laughs> then one of the questions was one of the clues was Beyonce and I thought he knew that Jay Z was married to Beyonce because almost everybody knows that. But apparently he's part of the not almost. <laughs> uh, so...
to come up with one word. And I guess the way you were supposed to play it is you were supposed to pick one one for the spot of humming and one for the spot of saying the lyric and one for the spot of one using one word. But that's not how we were playing it. We were not playing it the way it was meant to be played. So, but we still, ha we still had a lot of fun and uh, we learned that the stuff my husband knows and the stuff I is not the stuff I know. <laughs> So, the music he knows is not music that I generally listen to. So, like the Beatles, I am definitely not a Beatles fan. And he is a huge Beatles fan. He wishes he was born back then so he could be, you know, like all screamy and all, oh, goo goo gaga all over the Beatles. <sighs> It's okay. I will stick with Goo Goo Gaga over Steven Tyler, okay? <laughs> um, so, about Steven Tyler. My husband and I, we went to Vegas because... Okay, let's backtrack. When I was 16 years old... Was I 16? No, I was 15. Or so. 15 or 16. I can't remember exactly. My oldest brother, Donnie, said he was going to be coming out to California. Um, he hadn't been out for a long time. Uh, he lived in Massachusetts when my, my mom went and dropped him off back east. Uh, when I was, I don't know, uh, like 8 or 9, I think. And he stayed back east, and um, and then we went back to California. He came out, and he said that he wanted to do something with me. And I said, well, Aerosmith is playing in town. I want to see Aerosmith. I've wanted to see Aerosmith, you know, forever and ever. And he said he would take me, and then it didn't happen. So, I was bummed out, and then, um, I think they, they didn't tour for a while, or maybe they did, and I don't know, we just could never afford it, and so, when my husband and I got together, they were touring with Slash, one of Slash's bands that he was with, and Guns N' Roses is my favorite band, but, um, you know, they had broken up so long ago and whatever, so there was no, I, it, my, I, and my thought process was there was no hope for them to tour because Axel and Slash hated each other, so that would probably never happen, and so... Um, my husband and I got together and, um, I heard the announcement that they were announcing that they were going to be in town playing in, Sa um, not in Sacramento, but like Wheat Ridge or something really close. And so it wasn't too far of a drive. And so we bought tickets to go and we were all excited. And then the day that they were supposed to be here, they canceled. Um, due to health reasons or something along the lines. And so they did not tour back in an area where we were close enough to. I was bummed out. They refunded everyone their money. They announced their Vegas residency. And I told my husband, we are going. And I'm going to pay for tickets to see them pretty much up close and personal and um and so we ended up paying for our tickets and we were in the section in front of the stage um and at first I was kind of bummed out a little bit because everyone was standing up and I couldn't see but I mean it was pretty darn close and then 
Steven Tyler <laughs> jumps off stage. And I'm like, where'd he go? Where's he at? Where's like I can hear people freaking out because he's not up on stage anymore. So I'm like, where is he? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? And then why did I turn around and see him walking through the area we were stand like we were seated in? Yeah, I'm screaming my head off. I'm screaming his name. Um, and then he stopped at a kid and he was talking to a kid and so I, I stopped screaming or whatever, but then I tried to get his attention when he was walking by as, as he was done with the kid and unfortunately he did not see me nor hear me, but, um, I mean, we were like in touching distance pretty much, but I would... I would never grab him or anything like that without permission. So I uh, was just trying to get his attention first. And if that didn't work, I wasn't going to try to grab him. So I don't want to get taken down by security. <laughs> um, but it was pretty cool. And then the um, bassist, I can't remember his name right off the top of my head right now. It's kind of late but um he came off stage and was playing guitar in front of in front of us too it was pretty darn cool like that's the closest I've ever been to um like someone like a band or whatever that I that I like really like that I ever know that I've ever known of um so it was pretty awesome, and I totally like geeked up, ah, Steven! <laughs> like, my husband was staring at me laughing his butt off because he is like, I don't think I've ever seen you turn into like a schoolgirl or like a fangirl ever. And until today, he's like, wow. What just happened? <laughs> and, and then um, some guy next to us ended up like using us to climb over the chairs and hurt my sister's back and everything. So we were in a like she was in a bad mood and it was putting me in an in an irritated mood and. My niece was irritated with my with my sister because she said she yelled in her ear. So they they were like not speaking or whatever. And so I was like, oh my god, you guys are not ruining this moment like right now. I'm having like so much fun. That's the first time I've ever sat so close in a concert. Uh, we spent a lot of money. We ended up um, we ended up buying. Um, because there were tickets that were really expensive for only two of them. Or you could buy a section of like five for the same price as the, as the two that were like in center stage. So I was like, I really want my sister and to go and my niece to go and experience this with us. And... So we decided to buy all the tickets and um, so and then like all this stuff like happened and financially we started to have issues and whatnot and so uh, we ended up moving when we were like supposed to still be in California and meeting them in Vegas and so our lives definitely turn like because we bought the tickets like a year in advance so it it was like life definitely took took a turn and we were not expecting it so i don't know how you would have reacted if we had been able to be that close in the gnr concert that we went to mm. but i was surprised that you weren't as excited at GNR as you were at Aerosmith. Well, Axl Rose.
Rose didn't jump off the stage. So if Axl Rose had jumped off the stage and walked past me, I would have totally been a fangirl. Okay. I might have grabbed. I might have jumped on him, and then I'd have been arrested. <laughs> he might be the only one I would ever jump on. Of course, he'd probably hit me. <laughs> but I don't know. Um. Yeah. So during. Um, in between that, we actually found out that Guns N' Roses was touring again, together, as a whole, and, well, mostly as a whole, but, um, we, I immediately told my husband, we are going, I don't want to hear any if, ands, or buts, we are going, because that was an unexpected turn of events, because I certainly did not expect to ever hear about them touring again. Um, Axl Rose never got off the stage, so... <laughs> there was no way I could be a fangirl at his concert because he never left the stage. Show you. Careful. My husband and I also went to see um, Journey, Def Leppard, and um, Journey. Def Leppard, Journey with the new, with the new singer, Arnell. I actually watched the uh, docu, the docu, Netflix thing about Journey, about how they found Arnell and how much he sounded like the original singer and. Um, so, when we got to that concert, uh, we were actually late. Who was, who was with Journey and, um, Def Leppard? Foreigner. Foreigner. Yeah, that's right. So, it would have been an ideal 80s fangirl equals me, um, moment, but... Uh, we were late because of traffic in San Francisco and it was a mess and we missed Foreigner completely and we got there in the in-between and I was really upset because I really wanted to see all of them. I actually think I've seen Foreigner once before with my oldest son's father. Um, he took me to see Poison. He took me to see Poison twice, I think. <clears throat> and uh, he took me to see Eminem as well. More took himself, but I went along. I was not a fan of Eminem at the time. Um, and I want to say that that's all the concerts that I've been to. Oh, no. How could I even forget? I went to one other concert with my husband. And we went and saw Taylor Swift. I love Taylor Swift. I actually did not like Taylor Swift in the very beginning. When she was country. But... Um, I was a fan of her country music. I just, like... 
At first I didn't. I was like, oh my god, she's on every station. She's taking over the world. Um, but she is a brilliant artist and uh, a brilliant female vocalist. And she definitely deserves all the accolades she gets. And I think she's done a really good job. And people, you know, they give her a hard time because she sings about her exes or her love life. And but you know what? A lot of people will sing about what they know. And some even sing about stuff they don't know. And maybe they shouldn't be. But. Who knows her love story more than her. And. Love stories. They. Love songs they tend to sell. So why not. Why not. But. I'm a big fan of her. Reputation album. Which is the. The album she toured with when we went to see, um, she finally showed another side of herself that she couldn't, like that people were ma trying to make her hold back, like her having any, any opinions about anything and stuff. Like we watched, my husband and I watched her documentary and um, and it made us sad to see some of the stuff that she went through and how she went through it, but the fact that she made it through, like, pretty much unscathed after, like, she came, she bounced back from it and became stronger and, and learned, and learned who she was in the process, so... I mean, I don't think you could ask for anything more. And I say kudos to her for always trying to be at her best. Bye guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more diamond painting content.